Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm checking out a 2020 Mazda CX-30 premium all-wheel drive. This vehicle is sitting on 215.55 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a silver finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Polymetal Gray Metallic. And it's a very interesting, unique color. And the sun is shining, so hopefully you can get an idea of what it looks like here on camera. So here on the front, you notice it has this kind of upper lip on the top protruding a little bit. Gives it a pretty cool looking front end. I think Mazda did a good job of making it cool looking here on the front. Also the grill, uh, kind of uses like a three-dimensional looking grill, uh, keeping it from looking just like a flat grill, like a grate, you know, like a cheese grater or whatever. This is kind of more three-dimensional and very busy with all the patterns. And it's a gloss black, so kind of pops out, kind of looks faceted in a way. Now it's underscored, the, the grill, and the headlights are underscored by this chrome piece, which is looking pretty nice. It's not too linear, it's kind of contours around the front of the vehicle. And the base of the vehicle here in the front and all the way around the, the whole thing is a flat black hard plastic protective piece. So it's unpainted and that goes around the whole vehicle and I'll show you that in a minute. It also has active grill shutters. So right in here. Now I'm going to make a video about my likes and dislikes about this vehicle and believe it or not the active grill shutters are one of the dislikes and I'll leave a link in the description uh, of all the different things I like and dislike about the vehicle. Now the headlights are powered by LEDs and they are fantastic. They do work great and they have a nice halo effect and the the, uh, the, both the high and low beams are out of the same projector tube. It just refocuses the beam. They're also active bending, so you can actually see them going back and forth as you turn the steering wheel while you're driving. Really, really cool and useful. Um, now there is some side, there is some limitations, uh, which I'll get to later on. But um, but yeah, they are really, really nice. The headlights are some of the best I've seen in a vehicle, especially in this price range. Okay, so looking at the profile, the first thing you probably notice is all the plastic here on the side. So um, it's like it's a, uh, it's like it's like designated off-road vehicle in a way by the way it looks. But, um, but right in here, as you can see, it continues from the front, goes around the wheel wells, a tr tremendous amount, not just a little tiny bit. And then here, it even gets thicker back here and all the way across to the back. So the entire bottom portion of the vehicle is unpainted hard plastic and um, you know it does help protect you know from road debris and stuff like that but the styling you know it depends on what you like um, I don't really mind it that much but some people do um, so that's why I pointed out and it's probably more prominent like say if you had a white color something like that it would contrast more this color kind of blends in a little bit better so um, you know so it's a total personal preference type deal now it does have uh, in the pillars here gloss black and then with the tinted glass back here and if you were to tint the front glass it would kind of solidify this whole thing and then here are the windows just like the front it's underscored by this chrome piece and then it kind of hooks up there at the back it looking looking pretty good now the the uh, the handles the side mirror are body colored so they kind of blend in they have a good style though they're not too bland or anything like that this is what the key looks like and it's a proximity key designed where you could just keep it in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. And you notice it's flat on each side, has an emblem there, but all the buttons that are to, have, to be had in this vehicle are here on the edge. You have lock and unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate, and a panic button. Let's go ahead and push that panic button. So that's a nice, pretty strong horn. I was, I was expecting a little beepy horn, but it was nice. And uh, the power lift gate, of course, you could push that and it'd open it up. And, door, and the door locks, but it's kind of a squarish key 
And um, there is a physical key on the inside. It requires, you know, like a combination to get to it. Same thing with the battery. And I'll try to make a separate video showing you how to take this apart because it's not as intuitive as um, some other key systems. Uh, but anyways, it's a fairly light key, but it is kind of square. And it has like this ABS plastic on the outside. And you can see this vehicle is not very old. And you can see it already has a pretty decent amount of scuffs on it. Um, you know, but... I mean, it feels like a quality key. It doesn't feel like it's flimsy or anything. So as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of the door, you can lock the door by placing your hand right here. There's a little dimple right in here. You can place your hand there, thumb or whatever. It senses the hand position, it senses the key, and it'll lock the door. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle, it senses the key again, and senses your hand position and allows you access to the vehicle. It also has a really cool feature in which you walk away. You can turn this on or off to where you walk away from the vehicle. It actually just locked now and it'll tell that you're leaving it and just go ahead and lock the doors for you. Um, I thought that was a great idea because if you have the key with you and he you knows you're walking away, why not? You know, you can always unlock it when you come back. Uh, so I, I think that's one of my top favorite uh, features on this vehicle is just the fact that you don't have to worry about locking the door if you if you want lock the door or not did i lock the door i don't know let me go ahead and check it. it you know that if you have that feature on it's just going to automatically lock it if you forget to lock it even though the doors don't go all the way down to the bottom it does have this little lip right here right in there and that keeps a little bit of the road debris from getting into the threshold area so some vehicles solve that problem by putting the door all the way to the bottom and putting a seal. This one kind of has a little lip there. So uh, it does, from here up, is all covered by the door. It's just this part right here that, uh, you know, the lip, lip is trying to keep dirt and stuff from coming up. So that's one way of solving the problem. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. So this one has like multiple colors. You got brown, black, and then the white seats. And so you have soft touch surfaces here, and it's not like super duper soft or anything. You can hear it that I, I'm tapping on it. It's not that much softer than the hard touch down here, but it is a soft touch surface here. This is actually a little bit softer. Here is a little bit softer. All these are soft touch surfaces. And then here and here is all the hard touch. Now you notice it has this little thing protruding out. You see that? That connects with the dashboard and it kind of looks funny until you have the door shut and then it's kind of like a wraparound design. And this is, uh, that goes through. So you can hand can go through that. And you have the pocket and um, bottle holder there at the bottom and some chrome and gloss black. So there's a lot of different things going on there and it does have the premium Bose sound system. So you can see the Bose name has a little tweeter speaker there at the top in the pillar there's a central speaker in the center of the door there's the threshold and the door opens up quite wide so you can see the opening is pretty good getting in and out is great here in the front uh, you have lots of headroom and just overall just no problems getting in and out of the front of the vehicle there's the leather wrap seats. Now these are heated, not cooled, and they had the perforations there in the center portion, and then the smooth leather here on the outside. It even goes into this hard plastic though. There's no, some vehicles cover that with cloth right here where it meets up with the hard plastic, but um, this one doesn't. Maybe they have a, a stronger material, leather or something. Uh, the overall, the seats look great. Um, We'll get into the comfort once they get in the vehicle. Okay, so there's the floor mat. And there's lots of leg room here on the passenger. You notice there's like n no tapering. It's just wide open space there. There's a glove compartment. There's no lock. This comes down. It's smooth plastic. Also, there's a little shelf in there. So you have the bottom portion. You have a little flat shelf. So you can lay a book flat in there. So you can see the manual is laying flat, which is nice makes organizing the glove compartment a little bit easier. So if you're like me and, and uh, 
you have it all disorderly, it makes it a little bit easier to divide it up. Soft touch surfaces here and here. Down here is the hard touch. And you see that crumb underscore there under the vents. Okay, moving into the back here, uh, the front door, you can see it's nice and wide and headroom and all that stuff. Well, the back, this is where the compromises are. And now this is a compact CUV, so there's gonna be comp compromises. Uh, it's not necessarily a negative thing. But anyways, uh, you see this is getting in the way of your head getting in the vehicle. The door swings open decent amount of swing. It's not that bad. Uh, the thick, it's kind of a thick door. It seems a little thick to me, uh, especially, it just kind of fills in the space. I guess because this opening is so small that every little bit counts. There's the inside of the back door. Similar styling, uh, it does have the black and brown. Uh, you have the less, just a little bit of gloss black there. This is hard touch up here, soft, soft, and then hard. Okay, let me squeeze in here to the back seat area. It has a bench seat. And on the back of the passenger side seat, not the driver's, is a pocket. So you can put some stuff there. And you notice it's contoured in a little bit to try to give you a little bit more room. That's good. And the latch system or ISO fix for car seats is here. Now you notice these little caps pop off in order to access it. So you these are going to get lost. Um, anyways, that's just the way it is. Uh, so those are there. Armrest cup holders here in the center. This lifts up in case you need a center passenger. The leg, the, the, the floor actually goes down quite a bit. So your leg, legs are not going to be sticking up in the air too much back here. Uh, the center passenger though, there's this massive mountain of a hump. So that's gonna be an issue for an adult as far as sitting in the center of the seat. So keep that in mind. You do have some, some climate control vents, which is good. And you can see that driver's seat is in my normal position. I'm six feet tall and that's where I put this, that's where I drove today in it. So you can see the limitation there as far as the leg room behind that seat. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, starting here at the top, it has these roof rails in which you can put crossbars on right here. Uh, so right now they're just basically there as placeholders, but it does have the ability to put crossbars if you like. Um, and then there's a little shark fin antenna that is body colored there at the top. The third brake light is here at the top. It's nice, wide, and bright, powered by LEDs. Check out my night video uh, so you can see the interior and exterior lighting of the vehicle. So it does have a rear wiper and the tail lights. All the exter exterior lights are LEDs. The tail lights are pretty unique, uh, the way they look and the, you know, the style, and they have a nice, sharp, bright look. So they're, they're definitely nice. Now the backup camera is offset for some reason. It's way over here. So they put the button to open it up here and put the camera over there. So that kind of kind of diminishes it for me a little bit. I think it should be in the middle. So that way you can see where the center, when you look at the camera, you want to see where the center of the vehicle is when you're backing up. It makes it a little bit easier for me anyway. But you notice the all the plastic back here, continuing just like the front and sides, goes up all the way up to the, uh, the power lift gate. Now it has the dual exhaust tips, which look pretty cool. Okay, so you can use the key to open up the power lift gate, or you can push that button that's in the middle. Now it has a shade, which you can remove this shade. Uh, it's very easy to remove, and it's light too. You just release those and just pop it out and you can take it right on out. Now I have all my stuff in here that might help you out with uh, as far as what's back here. 
as far as the size, it is pretty decent. Um, of course, with the, the overall size of the vehicle, there is, you know, there's only so much space that you can have. But so this is, I think this is fine. I mean, for this type of vehicle, you don't expect that much bigger. The height is really nice, especially when you take that shade out. The way this hatch is kind of contoured, the height is really good. The depth, of course, you can fold down the seats and add to the depth. So you can add more stuff in here by folding these seats down and you can have passengers. So you can have, you can fold one seat or the other and add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. So that's good to have the 60, 40 split like that. Now under this floor is a spare tire and the subwoofer and your tools, of course. When you lower the power lift gate, you have two options. You have this one that just lowers it, and then this one to lower and lock the vehicle, which is really handy. So if you're getting stuff out of the vehicle, then you're probably like, okay, I'm getting my stuff out, my hands are full. If you go ahead and push that button right there, we push that, it closes the power lift gate and then secures the vehicle. So that way you just push the button and walk away. It does have a locking fuel door, so it does lock when the vehicle is locked. So we'll go ahead and unlock it. Not only does it unlock the doors, it also unlocks the fuel door, which is pretty cool. And it has a traditional cap, tether, and a little place to put the cap while you're pumping gas. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, to start it up, you just put your foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button right there. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat snaps in place in two places, keeping it straight for you. Here's your accelerator and brake pedal. And it has a little pivot at the bottom of the accelerator. And a nice big footrest there on the left side. Now the footrest isn't just some hard plastic. It is a really durable, like a rubber type material. And it has a pretty decent angle as well when you get the seat adjusted. So let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch right here in the center. You just reach in and move it to the left. It's, it's reach in and down a little bit. Reach, move it to the left and lift up. Now the head, the, the, the hood is like super heavy. So you gotta be prepared for that. It's a heavy steel hood apparently. There's the latch and it requires a prop to hold it up. And there's the prop here and it swings up to there. The underside of the hood has uh, a very thin insulation. This helps out with the noise, mostly. And you can see it has a seal across the back as well. See all the way back there. And then an in a insulated firewall, insulated battery. Most of the insulation is for noise. And the, seal, the seals around engine bays um, are for noise, but also airflow. So you can see the seal across the front as well as the side kind of seals everything up. So that way the, the vehicle has control of the airflow and the noise keeps it in there. Uh, so the insulation of the firewall is for noise, but it also has a heat, heat shield back there as well. So you can see the heat shield because the exhaust is back there. And the intakes here on in the front. Now it has this plastic cover um, and it does have some insulation on the underside that helps out with noise a little tiny bit. Uh, but there's your engine. This vehicle is powered by a 2.5 liter dual overhead cam four cylinder engine and a six speed automatic transmission. Now they call it Sky Active G for the engine and Sky, App Sky Active Drive for the transmission. 186 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So the power windows are here and they're one touch down in the back. And you see it doesn't go all the way down, it goes right there. And one touch up going up. So all four windows are like that, one touch up and down. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. Now, unlike, unlike the passenger side, which is a manual seat, you have a power seat here for the driver. So it goes up 
down, tilt. You also have a two-way lumbar adjustment there as well. These are heated seats. To the left of the steering column, there's a little storage compartment here and has a little felt interior, just a very mild felt inside. Just keep things from rattling, I guess. And then you have your presets for your power seat. There's two presets and you can set it there. This is the ability to open up your power lift gate. Now these two buttons, this one is to turn off, quickly turn off your safety features if you'd like. And then, so like say sometimes it's kind of like unnecessarily beeping at you or something telling you about your going over the line or something like that. You just want to turn off your safety features. You can quickly turn those off or on, the ones that you have selected anyway. And then this one is for, this is like an, like an off-road type thing. Uh, like so if you're in just slippery or just not road-like conditions, you can enable this and this will kind of just tell the vehicle that you want the vehicle to understand the conditions it's in, which is not the, the road, that kind of thing. Since it is an, an all-wheel drive, vehicle it can do a little bit of you know slippery conditions or whatever off-roading it also has a tilt and telescoping steering column and you lock it in place with that lever it does have a heads-up display and right now it's just showing the speedometer but it'll actually give you uh, roadside information like turn-by-turn -turn directions here uh, also safety information like um you know, like if you're going over the line or if there's a vehicle in front of you when you have the adaptive cruise control on. It does give you additional information here, but right now, since there's nothing going on, it just gives you the digital speedometer. And you can adjust the brightness, the tilt, um, the, you know, up and down, all that stuff in the, in the settings. It's not, you want to do that before you drive because when you start getting into settings, that is a whole rabbit hole of trying to get into that kind of stuff so it's not easy to change so you want to go ahead and set up your brightness and all that stuff before you start driving okay i'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out and there's quite a few this is the type of vehicle that you really want to spend some time in it before you drive and learn how to use it and learn how to open the compartments and change settings and all that stuff before you start driving because everything has a combination there's nothing in <laughs> there's very few things intuitive and some stuff is is hard to see and i'll point all this stuff out um but once you learn how to use the vehicle then it's not really a big issue it's just you have to spend some time with it okay so i'm six feet tall i have the seat all the way let's go all the way back yeah there we go all the way back and all the way down so lots of leg room here so this is too far back, really, for me to drive. Um, so I could put my legs completely straight out. And um, so yeah, lots of leg room in the front. Now, the <laughs> rest in peace, the leg room in the back uh, when you do this, but um, just to give you an idea of how much leg room you have. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel, it has a leather wrapped steering wheel and it has some cushion to it. It's not like super hard, but it's not like a rubbery cushion. Um, so. It does have a little bit of a give to it, which is nice. And the contour is good. Has some grips there at the top. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel, you can see it has some buttons. When I first got in the vehicle, uh, the buttons under here, I have the shade up to keep glare from coming in. But there's a significant glare at the top of this chrome piece, and I couldn't really make out anything under here. So these buttons are, to, uh, during the day, these were like didn't even know they exist that there were even buttons um and there's some other situations like that and other buttons too where you can't really make them out at night time these are backlit so you can see them just fine but during the day I, I was like you know these were not that visible because of the angle of the sun you know the, the brightness is coming from this angle and it just completely casts a shit like these are just insignificant but anyways uh your cruise control is here on the right side and this is the key button that you have to push to turn it on so once that's on, you can set it by going up or down, you can change your speed by going up and down, and you can push this, this center portion in to resume. So right in here is uh, your cancel. Right above that is your adaptive cruise control, the distance between the, you and the vehicle in front of you. You can adjust that um, up and down. So you go up and down to do that. This is up and down for speed. 
So that's the cruise control, and it has a pretty good distance. I mean, it keeps, I, I like a far, a far distance. So when I put it at a far distance, it keeps you a really good distance away. Um, and also, when you engage that, if you have your, uh, your lane keep assist on, if you go over the lanes, it's gonna vibrate the steering wheel, or you can have it beep, whichever. So that way, you know, keep you from, and it's not intrusive, it's not like a big deal. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Here on the left side, is your volume for your radio and change through. So you notice the camera has a little bit of issue focus on, on these things. They're not that sharp and prominent, especially on the metal part. Um, the camera is gonna make it look great, but with your naked eyes, it's, it's not really that visible. I'm zooming in and, and getting focused on this kind of stuff. Uh, so your volume for your radio is up and down, changing through your, your, your audio, audio tracks is up and down. Now you push the center button for a mute and you push the center button to change your source. This info button corresponds with the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, you can pair your phone with the, with the vehicle and you can answer and hang up here and make, make calls of course as well using voice recognition. So it has the windshield wiper controls here for the front and rear. It also has an automatic so your windshield wipers will, they're rain sensing, so they'll turn on when they sense rain. So you put, pull it down and it gives you a nice little light to let you know that it's that's on the automatic feature. I think that's cool. So you just put it right there and when it starts raining, it'll start turning on by itself or you can continue and you know adjust it uh, manually if you like. Here on the left side is your turn signal, but it also has your headlight controls. So it has off and it when you let go, it's spring loaded. So. This turns on or off when you do this, your daytime running lights. Um, and then you have parking lights, and then you have your headlights. Now when you have it in the uh, automatic feature, uh, the automatic setting here, there's a button on the end, and that's your automatic high beams. So you can push that to enable that. And that way it'll dim your headlights when there's an oncoming car or if you're behind another car. Headlights are fantastic and very bright, so you don't wanna blind people, so that's a good idea to at least have it on automatic. And they seem to work fairly well as well. So the gauges, the, the, the intensity of the light, you can, change, you can adjust it right there. And then you can reset your trip over here. Okay, so you have actual physical gauges here and there. So on this side is your RPMs, your tachometer. On the right side is your fuel gauge and your engine coolant temperature. But here in the center part is a screen. This is all screen in the center. So in this, this uh, screen, and it actually has a physical dial around the outside to give it, to kind of make it look like a real, you know, a dial, but it's actually just a whole big screen. And so here on the left side, that's your, your trip. Right above that is your uh, miles per gallon. On the right side is the outside temperature and your distance uh, to empty. So how many miles you can drive before you have to get gas. And the fuel economy was not as good as I thought it was going to be. But anyways, um, we'll get to that later. So right in here is a digital speedometer, which is nice, because I don't really like the HUD, HUDs in general, heads-up display. I like to have a, just a digital speedometer down here. And this is my default screen, just a digital speedometer and the car, and it shows the lines. This is your safety feature, so it sh shows your like adapt adaptive cruise controller if you're going over the line, that kind of thing. So remember this info button. We're going to go and push that button. And it cycles through different looks. So you can see we have a different look here. So this is your just like a regular speedometer, which is looking pretty cool. It looks like a real needle and all that stuff. Push it again. You get driving information, digital compass, average miles per gallon. So you see that I'm getting I'm averaging 26.6 miles per gallon. And with a four cylinder engine on flat roads and I drive fairly easy, um, seems like you get a little bit better than that, but that's what it's getting. All right, and then it goes back to the screen. So you, you just cycle through and rest on the on the on the the view that you want. Basically, it's not super advanced as far as the screen. Now there is some some adjustments, but you have to use the other screen to adjust the screen. We'll get to some of that in just a minute. All right, there's the start button. And here is a screen, 
and it, it is um, not a touch screen it's too far away so it's just a screen and um, it does have a digital clock which is kind of small there but uh, so right now it's just showing you basically what the Bluetooth is doing and so we're gonna have to skip all the way down here to control it so it has a series of knobs and buttons and these knobs are also switches as well so this is why I say this is the type of vehicle that is not intuitive it's not you have to spend some time to learn the vehicle if you get in and start driving it just trying to find the volume knob sometimes may be a pain because there's the volume knob it's not up here there is one on the steering wheel but that's the volume knob but that's also a knob for other things as well so if we okay if we we have a home button we have a back button this is a, a uh, navigation button and this is your whatever like your radio your sound your, your songs and stuff this is a favorites button which you have to set up um, there's nothing it's not going to do anything unless you set it up and then your volume is a knob to turn this way same thing with this knob you can move the knob left and right you know depending on what screen you're in this one moves left and right so you can bump it left or right to change through the tracks or radio station that kind of thing you can also push it down to mute the song the radio this one you push down to make selections so I hope you're taking notes because now I'm gonna have to tilt the camera up here and I'm gonna use the big knob actually I'm gonna push the home button so we're gonna go to the home screen all right so now this is the home screen now the big knob is gonna be turned and I'm gonna go through to make my selections um, so there's a whole menu here and you notice the clock is still small but it's in a different spot so we'll start here with information so I'm gonna push down on the big knob and now I have this information fuel efficiency monitor so we can look at that go push the back button we can go into travel link here and vehicle status monitor select that uh, we can see the, about maintenance schedules, this, this type of stuff. Push the back button. Push the back button again. Go down to entertainment. Push down on the big button. Uh, so now we, ha now we have this. Um, but you, now we can uh, push down on the big button. It pops up a possibility of a sorts list. Now we can select that. And now we can go to our radio push down on the big button now we're at our radio okay so now we're listening to the radio but now we, let's say we want to go somewhere else we can go back out of that we can't have the radio screen and the navigation at the same time uh, you know that you're just like one place or another so let's go back out of that S scroll with the big knob turn it push down on the big knob uh, so this is where we can connect devices uh, you can also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You just have to plug them in to the USB port. Navigation. Now, I like the navigation map is pretty nice, but the orientation of the screen with it really wide but not very tall, as you're going, if it's top-down view, then you can't really get an idea of how far what, what's ahead of you. You just basically see what's side, side by side. Um, you know, so if you want to kind of visually see the turnoff, you kind of have to get it out of the top-down view into like a you know follow you type mode or whatever um, but it's a pretty cool screen and also has a night mode and stuff like that all right so let's get back out of that now we can go into settings and so that you can do the in vehicle display which is the um, the heads-up display and go into in vehicle. okay so you have heads-up display center display and instrument so you can go in there and and adjust your settings there and that's all another rabbit trail there and then you can go into sound settings now there's there's no way that I can tell to go from the radio to the sound settings so I have to go back out of the radio go into the settings then go into this 
um, and then select the sound settings to adjust the sounds and it's multiple menus here so we got sound um, so let's go right here and then we can adjust that kind of stuff safety settings we can go in here and adjust the different sensitivity and different features that we like to uh, enable or disable and then you have vehicle settings door locks all that stuff connectivity system settings so this is like the clock voice recognition, change the language, the temperature, um, you can change it to, you know, kilometers per hour or whatever. Go back out of that. All right, so, I think you get the idea that it's not, it's not something you have to, you have to use these series of buttons and, and stuff like that in order to get into different things so you have to really focus your eyes and you have to have the the intuitive you have to if you're not familiar with the system you're looking down at these buttons trying to figure out which one to touch and which one to push or whatever and you're looking up here and then you're going up and down these menus and all this stuff then it makes it to where it's like well you can't unless you're super familiar with the system you're basically can't use it while you're driving basically so you know I, I, I think that's you make of that of you know what you want but uh, I think it's it's one of those type of systems that it could be a lot easier to use all right so here is the climate control and it's a dual zone driver and passenger temperatures here your fan speed now this is another one of those things where when I first got in the vehicle this with the sun shining on it makes these black buttons um, these two especially just completely invisible and are they're at an angle so they're aiming up they're not aiming directly at me nighttime they're backlit so you can see them but during the day this casts a quite a bit of a reflection from the Sun and bright lights and then you can't really tell that those buttons are even there so you can adjust your fan speed if you like. You can have an automatic, uh, you can turn on, all on or off, and then your air conditioning. There's your heated seat. Now it's a three stage for your driver and passenger. Rear defroster, front defroster, froster there. There's the, U, the, the one USB port here for connecting your phone for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And there's a little tray right there. It's not quite wide enough for my phone, so my phone kind of like, gets you know hat like diagonal just hanging in there um, but there is a place to put it and there's the cup holders right here and they have these little spring-loaded deals for to accommodate different size cups uh, but it's all this stuff is on the other side of the shifter so you know if you're trying to reach a cup or whatever then you're gonna have to deal with the shifter and and all that stuff so it's not made for coffee drinkers I don't think Okay, so there's the, the shifter, and you have your sport mode, which you can turn on or off here. So when we turn on sport mode, it just gives you an indicator, a little sport mode thing. And it emphasizes performance over fuel economy when you do that. And uh, so let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And we put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up. And remember, it's an offset backup camera. So it's not in the very center of the vehicle. So you can see that you see more tag on that side than the other side. So the guidelines kind of help you out with trying to figure out uh, where the vehicle is in relationship to other things, but they're not active guidelines. I'm turning the steering wheel, they're just static. Um, so they just gonna give you a general idea and I don't know if, I, they don't really look 100% accurate because they just seem like they're offset as well. Um, but you can see behind the vehicle, and that's basically the main point of the backup camera. So all of them. That's that's it. Uh, neutral, drive. You do have a manual mode in which you can bump it like a ratchet shifter and change through the gears. You can also use the pedal shifters. So and they're on the back of the steering wheel. They're right here. 
here and here. And once you engage them, you can change to the, the gears uh, on the six speed automatic. But if you want to turn that off, you just press and hold the plus and it'll turn it and go back to the automatic mode, the normal, it'll shift gears for you basically. Okay, so we sold these buttons and so this right here is your electronic parking brake. Now when you stop the vehicle and, get, and park it and get out, it'll engage the parking brake. But when you get back in, you have to manually disengage it. And I always forget to do that. So I'm putting it in drive and then obviously it won't go. So I have to disengage that. Um, so it's some, something to remember to do before you go. And I think it's a good say, it could be a good safety feature, but I would like the other vehicles have the ability to go in the settings and make it to where it disengages when you go to drive. You know, you get in the vehicle, you put it in drive. That's telling, should tell the vehicle, hey, I want to drive, right? Um, but you, and disengage that, but they don't have that feature. Auto hold. So this will hold the brakes for you while you're sitting in traffic or an extended a, a red light for an extended period of time. As long as you have this on and you, you're driving, when you come to a complete stop, it'll hold the brake for you until you push the accelerator and, and then it'll release the vehicle. Okay, so here's your armrest and it's pretty good size. Um, nice and soft too. This doesn't bottom out. I'm like going way down there and it's not bottom, bottoming out and it has a property line so you can keep the passenger on his side and you on your side so that way if you would choose to share it with him then um, then you have some you know some boundaries basically. Uh, but okay so here's another combination piece that you'll have to learn otherwise you're you know, while you're, if you try to do this while you're driving for the first time, you're going to be like, what in the world is going on here? Because it's, it's simple, but if you don't know how to use it, then you don't know how to use it. Okay, so we, there's a little lever under here, and usually when you pull that lever, you can lift up. This one, no, you can't lift it up. So what you have to do is you have to lift the lifter up, pull it back either in two positions. There's only two positions this will work. So you got to pull it back to the particular position that's going to work and then right at that point you can lift it up um so i'm going to lift it up and show you so it has these two positions right here here and here all right so you can pull it back and it'll snap in the first first position then you can lift it up here okay or you can continue to continue to go back and then you can lift it up so it has two positions now or you can leave it all the way back like that and that way you can access stuff here in the front which is pretty cool i guess uh, but if you have it here it's not going to do it you have to slide it back to the position then lift it up all right so here's the compartment there's no lights in here by the way there is a little felt lining piece in the bottom I think if this was bright or white, some kind of bright color, it would help out with visibility in here. Especially since there's no lighting in here and there's no backlit anything. There's a USB charger. You also have a 12 volt power supply. Now, this one, you can see, it has a battery on it. So it is always on, basically. So if you need to charge your cell phone or something like that, you can plug it in and then you go into the store or whatever um, and you can plug in a device and charge it even when the vehicle's off, which is nice. But you want to be careful because if you leave a charging cell phone in a hot car, um, you know, it could damage the battery or whatever. But, but it does have the ability to just stay on even when the vehicle's off, which is handy at times. It has an auto dim rear view mirror and it's actually auto dimming a little bit right now because I have the shade of the light sensor and the light sensor is right, at, right back here. The side mirrors are not auto dimming, but they do have the little indicators for your blind spot monitor system. So that little triangle illuminates when there's a vehicle in your blind spot, or it also serves as the rear cross traffic alert system. So if there's a vehicle coming when you're backing out of a parking space, it will let you know what the appropriate side is by illuminating those as well. Up here, you have the ability to turn on interior lights here and here. These are LED powered, nice and bright. You can turn on all the interior lights by pushing that button or have them turn on with the door right here. Now, when you push this, that's the off button. So when that light is on, that means this, is, this feature is off. So we're gonna turn that on by turning the light off. This, of course, this is your uh, your center of control. We'll get to that in a minute. You have a place to put some shades, sunglasses, and it's felt line, nice, soft, all the way even in this area. 
The visor has a mirror, a little clip, and a light. And it has like a vinyl material. It also does not slide out, uh, but it does have this little extension, which is nice because it adds to your coverage instead of shifting your coverage. So you can actually add to your coverage, which is cool. And it's basically the same thing on the passenger side. The sunroof uh, has a shade that covers 100% of the light. So we open that up. That's a manual. Now we can use the button over here. Remember that button? to tilt it up or we can go back with it. So let's pull it back down and then let's go back. Pull it back again. Nope, doesn't go any further. So let's go forward and we can close it up. Okay, so looking at the visibility in the back, um, you can see it has pretty significant pillars back there. And the visibility in the front also is hindered by large pillars. So in my particular case, um, you know, the, the, the visibility, I'm used to poor visibility in a vehicle, so it's not a big deal, but it's just another one of those things where you have to get used to it. The small window in the very back, you have the large pillars, little window back there, um, but you do have the back glass there. But these pillars are wide. Okay, so if I'm driving, uh, the headlights are nice and bright and they turn, but they turn right into the blind spot. So like as I'm turning the steering wheel, it actually turns like now I'm looking at a pillar. So I have to like move my head this way and, and to try to see around. So this is a, uh, another thing that you have to get used to with the large, large pillars as far as visibility, uh, cause that could be very dangerous when you have you know, large blind spots right in front of you. The con see, the contour of the vehicle, and it seems like they emphasize more about the styling than the functional aspect. So, you know, it's all, it's something all to get used to. It's not necessarily a, a objectively negative thing. It's just something you have to get used to. But anyways, thank you for watching and uh, check out my channel. I'm gonna have links to a night video and a test drive video and a likes and dislikes more subjective video and i've shared i've shared a little bit more subjective opinion in this video that i normally do um but uh, there seems like there's some stuff in this vehicle that really needs to be highlighted so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time